In this chapter, we are going to cover bonding and structure of alkanes. Alkanes are simplest compounds of carbon, and of course, we need first to examine electronic configuration of carbon. Carbon has six electrons, two of them shown in black on the left are 1s electrons and they are core electrons. They don't participate in bonding. We are interested in four of the valence electrons. They are shown here in blue boxes. Those are 2s and 2p electrons. Two of them are 2s electrons, they are paired up, and two are unpaired 2p electrons. At the bottom, we have a ground state of carbon atom shown as Lewis structure, so four valence electrons on the carbon. Carbon actually cannot form uh, alkane from ground state electronic configuration. The first physical phenomenon that happens in the course of bond formation is promotion of S electron to P electron, and that requires energy of 96 kilocalories per mole. Such promotion results in four unpaired electrons. So carbon atom ends up with four unpaired valence electrons, and now these four electrons can form four bonds. And at the bottom, you have Lewis structure of carbon atom in an excited state. So promotion of an electron results in carbon atom in an excited state, and it's in that state that carbon forms bonds of alkane. If carbon were to form bonds simply from its excited state, it would form four bonds. But those four bonds would have been of two different types. One type of bond would be one bond that is formed with carbon 2s orbital. That, one, that bond would be short and strong. And another type of bond would be bond, three bonds that are formed from carbon 2p orbitals. Those bonds would be comparatively longer and weaker. As we know, in alkanes, all four bonds that carbon forms are of the same type. They are same length, same strength. And valence bond theory, which is the theory that we are using here, cannot explain that. So at this point, theory breaks down. We have an option of abandoning that theory and using better molecular orbital theory, but molecular orbital theory is too complex. And valence bond theory is more pictorial, easier to understand, and more intuitive. So we like to stick to that theory. But since it's broken, we have to fix it. And so we introduce an ad hoc hypothesis to fix such a broken theory. In this case, we introduce simple mathematical operation, hybridization. Hybridization simply means combination. We combine these four orbitals to give new four combined or hybrid orbitals. So hybridization of 2s, 1-2s, and 3-2p orbitals gives four hybrid sp3 orbitals. Those orbitals in terms of shapes and energies are in between s and p orbitals. Hybrid orbitals are designated by listing types of orbitals that are being hybridized, in this case s and p, and in superscript we list the number of orbitals that are being hybridized. If orbital is listed, as in this case s, it means that at least one orbital of that type has to undergo hybridization, so we don't list number one. Other numbers have to be listed. So sp3 means that 1s and 3p orbitals have been hybridized to give four hybrid sp3 orbitals. Here is another view of hybridization. If we consider um, orbital energy diagram, on the left we can see energies of orbitals shown uh, by showing shapes of the orbitals. So 2s orbital shown in red is obviously lower energy compared to three of the 2p orbitals that are higher energy, shown in blue. When they hybridize, they give these four hybrid orbitals, shown in purple, which are in energy between s and p. They are closer in, p orbit, in energy to p orbitals because there are three p orbitals that are being hybridized. And on the right, we have this box diagram where energy of each orbital is shown as rectangular box. And again, uh, relative energies of s and p orbitals and hybrid sp3 orbitals. Geometry of hybrid orbitals in this case is tetrahedral. So sp3 hybridized carbon has tetrahedral geometry. 
Tetrahedral geometry means not that atom is tetrahedral. Atom is perfectly spherical. Atom cannot be tetrahedral. But four bonds that that atom forms have tetrahedral arrangement relative to each other. Which means that carbon atom is at the center of tetrahedron and four bonds point towards corners of the tetrahedron. That's shown on the left as lines for bonds. Note that solid lines indicate bonds in the plane of the drawing. Wedge bond, bond that points towards you or towards the viewer, and dashed bond, one that points away from you. Middle one shows the same bonds as hybrid orbitals. So four hybrid orbitals on the carbon. And on the right, we have angles shown. So four hybrid orbitals on the carbon, and you can see that angles between those four hybrid orbitals are 109.5, which is ideal tetrahedral angle. Now we can examine bonding in alkanes, and we'll do that on simplest example of alkane, that's methane. Alkanes are a class of hydrocarbons that are saturated. Hydrocarbons means that compounds contain only carbon and hydrogen. Saturated means that valence requirements of carbon, which is four, are satisfied by carbon forming four single bonds. And so methane as simplest alkane has molecular formula of CH4. Here is Lewis structure. So carbon is attached to each of the four hydrogens by single bonds. Here is perspective drawing. As I just mentioned, in a perspective drawing, three-dimensional structure of a molecule is shown, and bonds that are in the plane of the drawing are shown as solid lines. Bond that projects towards the viewer is shown as a wedge, and one away from the viewer as a dash. And finally, here is ball and stick model. Note how that ball and stick model corresponds to perspective drawing. Here is how we represent schematically bonding in methane. So on the left, we have uh, carbon in the ground state. So in ground state, electronic configuration of carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And uh, orbital energy diagram of valence electrons is shown on the left. So two S electrons are paired up and we have two unpaired 2p electrons. Promotion results in carbon in an excited state. So one S electron is promoted to 2p orbital and now we have four unpaired electrons. Finally, hybridization results in formation of four sp3 hybrid orbitals where we have four orbitals of same energy and same property. So as you can see here in summary, uh, when considering hybridization in general on any atom, we consider electron configuration of that atom in the ground state. Then there is promotion if necessary. In case of carbon, it is necessary. And now to form a bond, atom is an excited state. And finally, we have that mathematical operation of hybridization, combining of orbitals to give hybrid orbitals of the same properties. Here is another description of hybridization. So an S orbital combines with P orbital, and those are actual shapes. Before, actually, I didn't mention, because we have to simplify things, but shapes that we used for orbitals were stylized. So here are actual shapes of S and P orbital. As they hybridize, this is, on the left, actual shape of hybrid sp, sp2, or sp3 hybrid orbital. This is actually sp3 hybrid orbital. So you can see that this is actually roughly spherical. It's very similar to s orbital, but it has two lobes, just like p orbital, two lobes that have opposite signs. So one is shaded, the other one is clear. Problem with actual shape is that if we were to represent that, uh, then that would clutter the drawing. And it would be very difficult to show anything else. We could show hybrid orbital but we couldn't show anything else. I couldn't show what that orbital overlaps with and couldn't show other atoms. So for that reason, we used stylized, we used stylized shapes. So a large bonding lobe is made much smaller. It's drawn much smaller. It's drawn in a form of a teardrop, even though it's not a form of teardrop, simply to show the direction of the bonding. So that teardrop points in the direction of the bonding. And the other smaller non-bonding lobe 
can be represented or actually it can be omitted because it is not important. It does not participate in bonding. So stylized shapes are shown on the right. Middle one shows that teardrop, non-bonding teardrop, and on the far right we have a completely stylized shape that only shows bonding, highly stylized bonding lobe that only shows the direction of the bond. And so now, when we consider geometry of a compound with an sp3 hybridized carbon atom, it's tetrahedral geometry. So you need to know what is tetrahedron. So the, here is tetrahedron shown with front face missing and three back faces shown in three colors. Each face is colored as blue, yellow or red. And so carbon atom is at the center of that tetrahedron. And substituents are at four corners of that tetrahedron, one at the back, here is one uh, down to the left, one at the top, and one down to the right. So that would be geometry of sp3 hybridized carbon atom with substituents. That's actually what we can see experimentally. For example, if we carry out X-ray diffraction studies. We, we cannot see electrons, but we can see atomic nuclei, and we can determine positions of atoms in a molecule. And here is stylized, another stylized representation where sp3 hybrid orbitals of carbon overlap with 1s orbitals of hydrogen to form molecular orbitals. And again, ball and stick model of methane showing tetrahedral geometry and the same geometry of the molecule that we have just examined. And the, here is space filling model of methane. Note the difference between ball and stick and space filling. Ball and stick model shows bond length and bond angles very well, but it doesn't show bulk of the molecule very well. From ball and stick model, you couldn't tell that methane is actually roughly spherical, but space filling mod model shows bulk of the molecule and shows that actually shape of met methane is roughly spherical. And here is very important diagram. It shows energy changes in the course of formation of molecule of methane. So when you look at the left, we have atom of carbon and four hydrogen atoms, in, all, all of them in ground state. As you know, carbon atom has to be in an excited state to form bonds or bonds. So a promotion of electron in carbon from ground state to an excited state requires 96 kilocalories per mole. And now that carbon is in an excited state, it can form, it has four unpaired electrons, and it can form bonds with four hydrogens. Formation of a bond releases energy, so for forma formation of four carbon-hydrogen bonds releases 420 kilocalories per mole. So overall process is exothermic by 324 kilocalories per mole. Of course, this is idealized process. Methane is not formed this way. We cannot simply get, simply mix carbon and hydrogen and get them to react. This is theoretical process, but it, this illustrates formation of molecule of methane. Theoretical process, but still very important. What is important here is to see that energy input is needed for reaction to occur, and that large amount of energy is released in the course of formation of methane, and that's simply because product molecule is more stable than starting atoms. You will also notice that nowhere on this diagram hybridization appears. The reason why hybridization does not appear is that this is not actual physical phenomenon. It is simply mathematical operation and, of course, it doesn't require any energy. Now we can look at formation of ethane. Ethane is next simplest, second most simple alkane. It's next member of the homologous series of alkanes. Homologous series of compounds is a series of compounds where each more complex member of the series differs from the previous one by a CH2 group. It has an additional CH2 group. So this is Lewis structure of ethane. Its molecular formula is C2H6. And so again, uh, we can show hybridization of carbon. Car of course, since this is an alkane, carbon is sp3 hybridized. Here is yet another way to show hybridization of carbon atom. So 2s orbital hybridizes with three of the 2p orbitals. Here are three 2p orbitals on carbon atom. 
shown, where each orbital is shown with its two lobes, two lobes of the opposite sides. One is shown as black and the other one as white, and three, P, three of the two P orbitals are shown at 90 degrees to each other. So they hybridize to form four hybrid sp3 orbitals, which have the trahedral arrangement. They are at angles of 109.5 degrees to each other. Now, two such carbon atoms that are sp3 hybridized will form bond with each other. So they form carbon-carbon single bond. So that carbon-carbon single bond is formed by overlap of two hybrid sp3 orbitals and remaining three hybrid sp3 orbitals on each carbon overlap with one s orbital of hydrogen atom to form on each carbon three carbon hydrogen bonds and so this gives us molecule of ethane shown on the right shown with its orbitals bond angles and bond lengths of molecule of ethane are ideal tetrahedral bond angles of 109.5 and bond lengths are 1.54 angstroms for carbon-carbon single bond. You should remember this bond length because this is typical bond length of carbon-carbon single bond. And sp3 carb hybridized carbon hydrogen bond has length of 1.10 angstroms. Bo carbon hydrogen bond depends on hybridization of carbon. And so in this case, we are dealing with sp3 hybridized carbon. So bond length is 110 angstroms. One angstrom is unit of length, and it equals 1 times 10 to negative 10 meters. Here is ball and stick model of ethane, and you can see from this uh, model that uh, bond angles are ideal tetrahedral angles, and you can see also that carbon-carbon single bond is noticeably longer compared to carbon-hydrogen ca carbon single bond. On the right, we have shape of molecule of ethane or space filling model. From this model, you can tell that it's difficult to say from to, to tell from such model what are the bond lengths and bond angles, but you can see bulk, you can see what model looks like. It's kind of a bit elongated model. So as you can see, neither of the models is ideal, neither tells us complete information, but combination of the two gives us good picture of a molecule, what molecule looks like. Usually in organic chemistry, we use ball and stick models because we are mainly interested in bond lengths and bond angles. This completes video on alkanes, and next, in the following video, you will be looking at a different hybridization of carbon atom and bonding in alkenes and alkynes.